Hello everyone, we are the team led by Professor Hengwe Zhang from Anhui Medical University. It is our honor to have the opportunity to introduce to you a recent article published in the iMeta journal titled Cardiovascular Disease Therapeutics via Engineered Oral Microbiota, Applications and Perspective. Cardiovascular diseases CVDs remain a leading cause of mortality worldwide. The microbiome plays a crucial role in CVDs, and microbial therapies are widely used in treatment. However, issues such as drug resistance, precision, and safety still need to be addressed. With advancements in synthetic biology and a deeper understanding of the microbe-host connection, attention has turned to engineered bacteria. Recent studies have shown that oral dysbiosis can promote the development of CVDs. The vast and diverse oral microbiota has revealed the potential of its engineering in CVDs therapies. Given this, our aim is to explore the application of engineered microbiota in CVDs and discuss the potential of engineered oral microbiota, grounded on research into the roles and mechanisms of oral microbiota in relation to CVDs. Oral microbiota plays a crucial role in maintaining the stability of the oral microbial environment. Disruption of this balance, known as oral microbial dysbiosis, can lead to the occurrence of systemic diseases. In atherosclerotic plaques, Porphyromonas gingivalis and Aggregatobacter actinomycetum comitans, causing periodontitis, were detected. They could accelerate the development of atherosclerosis. Additionally, other oral pathogens such as Fusobacterium nucleatum and Streptococcus mutans are also associated with CVDs. The occurrence of cardiovascular diseases is often attributed to multiple risk factors such as obesity, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, and inflammatory bowel disease, IBD. Engineered bacteria can effectively delay or prevent the occurrence of cardiovascular events. For obesity, genetically engineered bacteria expressing n acylphosphatidylethanolamines exhibit resistance to obesity caused by high-fat diets. Modifying bacteria to secrete antioxidant can prevent liver oxidative damage and lessen hyperlipidemia. Furthermore, it's feasible to utilize genetically modified bacteria with antioxidant enzymes or anti-inflammatory cytokines for treating IBD. Glucagon-like peptide 1, GLP-1, affects and controls glucose metabolism and weight, reducing liver fat deposition. Engineering bacteria secreting GLP-1, such as Escherichia coli and Lactococcus lactis, can be built to play the above role. GLP-1 also has a blood pressure-lowering effect. For example, butyric acid-producing Clostridium butyricum, generated by recombinant plasmids transformation, has been shown to regulate microbial dysbiosis and reduce blood pressure in spontaneous hypertensive rats. The engineering of gut microbes can effectively prevent and treat CVDs, the engineering and application of CVDs-related oral microbes can potentially be seen as a dawn of CVDs therapeutic. Importantly, the different engineering of oral probiotics and pathogens provides multiple supports for specific and precise CVDs treatments. Engineering original probiotics using gene editing tools to have beneficial characteristics, offering targeted treatments for specific diseases. Some lactobacillus strains are potential candidates for oral probiotics. These strains are non-pathogenic and demonstrate promising probiotic potential. In addition to oral probiotics, oral pathogens associated with CVDs can be modified through protein engineering, gene engineering, and other methods such as exogenous plasmids. Based on the above discussion, the engineering of oral microbiota presents broad challenges and prospects. Firstly, oral microbiota provides rich microhabitats, making them a versatile target for microbial engineering. Secondly, the oral cavity serves as the entry point to the digestive and respiratory systems. More importantly, the collection methods of oral microbial samples are more convenient and diverse. In addition, oral focal infections originating from open sites may expand the potential targets for colonization by engineered oral microbiota. The use of engineered bacteria has still some limitations. The modified bacteria are still living bacteria, may cause adverse reactions in the host. Furthermore, the therapeutic use of bacteria-related microbes needs to follow regulations and guidelines. The transformation efficiency of engineered bacteria need to be further improved. Moreover, the clinical diversity of CVDs phenotypes bringing obstacles to communication between clinicians and researchers. Despite these obstacles, the potential of engineered oral microbiota in mitigating CVDs risks highlights a promising research field. Finally, we would like to thank the team for their efforts in the research, the IMETA editorial team for their full support in publishing the paper, and all of you for your patient listening.